So people often ask me, they say, Joe, or whatever your name is on YouTube, why doesn't my phone look like a piece of tree bark? Why doesn't my laptop look like a cutting board? Well, I'll tell you why. Because people today have no taste. Back in the 1960s, the 1970s, every piece of electronic equipment you had had wood grain on it. If you put your hi-fi out in the woods, a squirrel would immediately start building a nest on it. And that's the way things should have been. And that's what this project is all about. First, let's get us a room with some nice proper wood paneling. There we go. And then we're gonna take a look at this beauty. All right, so first we're gonna turn it on. We got some aircraft switches here. I love aircraft switches. There's nothing more satisfying than turning on these switches. Wait a few seconds and we're gonna look here at the, uh, at the uh, LED light that comes on. All right, so we know that it's on and it's going to boot up. So I made this out of an old IKEA closet and as you know you can't take IKEA stuff apart when you move. You can only thrash it apart with your hands and feet and tear it into pieces. So I thought this is what you have to do with an IKEA closet. And if you have an IKEA closet home, you have to do this too. This is the only use for an old armoire. All right, so we have like a nice retro uh, desktop here a wallpaper and I have a uh, script so that uh, cool retro terminal CRT automatically starts so let's put some text on the screen here so that we can actually see what's what the effect is so this is a, a program that makes your screen look like a retro cathro gray tube uh, screen there and it's kind of cool and there's like different settings you could put on uh, to emulate different systems. Just click on the menu here. And we can select, this is like, uh, I think this is like Apple, an Apple II or something like that. This is something else. I think this is like the default one here. I don't know. Oh no, this is this is the default here. This is like super retro. I don't even know what that is. That's like Fallout, I don't know. So if we want to get out of that, you can just hit uh, Alt F4, you get back to your cool retro uh, wallpaper here. And I got some like games on this system or whatever. Minecraft. I got some other stuff. And uh, of course, you can also connect to the worldwide interweb, which I will demonstrate. So this is built on a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and this disk that I have inserted here just has, uh, just has Raspbian as an operating system. So yeah, we can go here to YouTube a site that m some of you might know. And yeah, so that's it. That's uh, that's the one disk that I have, the one operating system. And we'll just uh, we'll just shut it down here, and I'll show you something else kind of cool. So one of the reasons that I built this terminal is because I uh, wanted to emulate uh, PlayStation Portable. See our indicator lights turned off. We can turn off the switches and remove the disc. So, anyways, I wanted to emulate uh, PlayStation Portable, and I had it on like a hundred-inch screen. PlayStation Portable is not good on a hundred-inch screen, so you need a, you need a smaller screen for that. So, we put in our other operating system here, and we can see it boot up into something called Laka. And if y'all don't know, Laka is uh, uh, a like PlayStation uh, interface look-alike. Uh, here it goes. It's also Linux-based, but it looks like, yeah, it looks like very familiar to anybody who's familiar with PlayStation. So we got our PS4 controller here. 
I'll turn it on and it immediately uh, hooks up to the Pi 4 via Bluetooth. And uh, you can go through and play uh, any of your PSP games. I got a good collection on there, some Grand Theft Auto. And this screen is way better than a 100 inch screen, like PSP was not meant to be on a, on a screen that big. And here we have the back, basically showing you what's going on inside, basically a bunch of spaghetti noodles in there. Not much, you can see my switches, you can see my USB hub that I used for the LED indicator. The Raspberry Pi 4 is not attached to anything at all in there, it's just kind of floating because all the cables I bought for a different project, uh, I would like to screw it down to something, but you, I don't even know if you can see it in there. But it's not secured to anything at all, it's just kind of floating around. Maybe someday I'll fix that. There's also a speaker in there if you look hard enough. Uh, and yeah, so that's kind of like the workings of it, the inner workings. All right, and here you can see the kind of the cool retro mouse that I found for it. I ordered this from Australia. It works great. Uh, and it kind of like fits the style of it. I don't know. Uh, and that's basically it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to my next video. Uh, I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the, uh, the comment section. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to answer any questions. Uh, to defend myself against this this workmanship here you know like it's not the best but uh but it still kind of works so uh yeah feel free to drop me a line thank you guys so much